<clears throat> Hello and uh, welcome to this broadcast. Um, I have the tough job of trying to remember one of my best friends and um, one of my best authors also. That is Professor Ken, Wal Ken Walibora, uh, who passed on um, a few a few days ago, um, close to two weeks uh, now, ten days plus or minus. Um, and I'm happy because uh, other creatives and uh, writers, that is, uh, my friend Tony uh, Mochama, uh, Professor Kabaji, and uh, several others have already given um, their tribute. So this is my humble tribute from the perspective of a man who worked with a genius. Um, and uh, every now and then, a publisher is lucky to work with somebody like um, the late Professor Walibora. Um, um, I can speak both English and Kiswahili, but um, because most of us, like my friend uh, Tony said, um, converse better in English, I will use uh, the English language, but I'll weave in uh, lines, uh, Kiswahili lines um, once in a while. Uh, so, First of all, I want to talk to talk about Ken, the man or the person, uh, before I talk about Ken and uh, his works, because uh, we know as publishers and uh, writers that there's a difference between a man and his works. Um, so I remember Ken as a very humble man, um, amiable and just lovely to be to be around. Um, he was not conceited, though he was uh, brilliant, very brilliant. And some people are so brilliant, they know it um, and it shows. But uh, for him, he was a very easy going man. Uh, so that's the man I'm talking about. Um, but to Ken um, was also a hard worker. He worked very hard. Of course, they were talented who don't put their talent into, into work, or rather, who don't work their talent. As a publisher, I come across writers who are very talented, but who don't want to sweat it out. But Ken had a, a real good work ethic. I remember in 2005, um, I was um, a young publisher, and we were working on a... Um, very tight deadline from KCD. Uh, one of the things people do not know about Ken is that he actually wrote a book, a secondary school book, which has been used now across the country by all from ones. It was bought uh, by the government to be used um, in the central procurement. Uh, that book was written by Ken um, with another friend of his called uh, Frank, Frank Wangendo, uh, who is also now let. So in 2005, I had a few days to submit a, a secondary school book in um, Form 1, Kiswahili. I used to work for Macmillan then. And I thought about who can give me passages of an entire book, about close to 100 passages in about three days. And Ken had just come back from America. Um, so I called him and told him I have a problem. I need about a hundred passages and I have really about three days, three days and nights, counting nights that is. And uh, he came, he took the challenge and he wrote the passages, about a hundred of them. He wrote them in three days and nights. So when he came on the fourth day and I saw him, he was completely battered and I was in shock. I asked him, um, that time he wasn't a professor yet. So I asked him, when again, uh, what happened to you? He told me I was not sleeping for three days, of course, and nights. He did not sleep. He worked on those passages um, and handed them over to me. Uh, so he had a really good 
work ethic um, and that's something that uh, I will cherish and I learned from him. Uh, something else, uh, maybe I can go to him now as a person, of course. And I think like all creatives, he was a restless man. Uh, most creatives are restless people. Uh, my friend Tony is a good example. Uh, and myself, of course, because I also write, but I've not written a book yet. Um, I'm still doing some uh, midwifing of others. But we are usually restless, always looking beyond the horizon to grasp something that um, is hard to grasp, really. So uh, Ken had that. I'm, I'm struggling to find the words, but it is that restlessness of a creative, of wanting to reach beyond uh, the horizon to grasp something really that cannot be grasped. Um, and of course, so he left Kenya, went to America, wandering, um, and then he came back to Kenya. Um, so uh, his journey is, um, is, is quite interesting uh, because of the wandering you know, nature of, uh, of a creative. And uh, I don't know why he left America, but he came back and we were happy to have, uh, to have him back. Um, ah, Sisha Osilio, I can see you. Yes, you edited Ndoto Almasi. I'll talk about that Ndoto Almasi. Uh, I remember the two and four that we went, went to through uh, when we were doing that, uh, that book. Uh, Christine Wakinwa says, Frank Wangendo was my editor. Um, yeah, so I've worked with the, with the legends, really. Uh, so in that aspect uh, of, of, of wondering and having that uh, endless curiosity, it's something that um, I really enjoyed uh, um, in, in, in Ken. Uh, there is somebody else, there's somebody who, so one day I talked to him and asked him about um, what inspires him because of course we were having the, the small teeth between publishers and uh, and uh, and writers um, all of all of all, all all publishers go through some teeth rather different uh, disagreements with their authors so i was guiding him towards um, a particular angle I, I i wanted him to tackle some specific things and he told me buana john um kalamu hufuata hadithi that was his philosophy that the pen will just go where the story leads it, not the other way. You cannot sit down as an as a, as a creative and say, "I want to write a book uh, talking about this theme," because then the pen will be following the theme. For him, it was the other way around. It was um, uh, Kalam Kufuata Hadithi, and uh, it reminds me of uh, one of my favorite authors called. Uh, Andre uh, Asiman, who was saying that the write, writing process is a really difficult process because you are after something that cannot be grasped. You are always looking for, for something. And as you write, uh, it's like going to the center of, of a cone, round and round and round until you reach the center. And when you reach the center, you like kind of go home. Yeah, when you are there, you've reached. So the, the writing process for him was like um, a revelation and unraveling of, um, of, 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 of different things as, um, as he, wrote, he wrote. And one of the things I like about um, Ken was that uh, he was also multifaceted. He was, go he was as good in English, of course, as he was good in Kiswahili. Very uh, unique because most, most writers are good in one language and not the other. But he could actually swing between the two the two languages. Though of course, Kiswahili was uh, more preferred, and uh, he could write for children. Um, so just to step back, uh, the wandering uh, creative that he was. Of course, he moved from Kenya to America, I've said, and back, and he moved from publisher to publisher. Uh, uh, I, I I published him in Macmillan. Uh, at Macmillan, I published Ndoto Almasi uh, directly, the books I published myself, but of course, he has published other books um, there. Uh, published Ndoto Almasi, published the secondary Kiswahili book, and published another one called Damu Nyawusi, which is a collection of short stories, which, was a, which became a, a set book. Um, and I think what I found it interesting about him is that he could actually do both textbooks 
and um, children's books and uh, novels and he could write in English and Kiswahili. So he was really, he was really, really talented. Um, one of the other things I want to say about his works is that uh, because there's a philosophy behind every writer, though the writers themselves may not know, is that philosophically, I think Ken was arguably uh, a realist and uh, a realist, uh, realism looks beyond myths um, and uh, assumptions and um, social norms to the nitty gritty of daily daily life. So he will uh, look at um, the struggles of ordinary people. And that's why I think he was really beloved. He was uh, kind of uh, a popular writer who wrote about pop, what's happening in pop culture, what's happening now. Um, and I'll give you examples, of course, from Ndotu Almasi, because that's the, the book I, I personally um, received from him, edited it with the help of Sishia Wasilwa, uh, who is online, I'm happy for, for, for that. And is that uh, he depicted the world in objective terms, not in fantasy or... Um, I would say he was not a painter because painters can be a bit um, idealistic. He was more of a photographer. And because of that, he really worked us into, into our senses because a photographer grasps or rather takes a view of life uh, the way it is. So, for instance, let me just read um, a line from Dr. Almasi uh, about uh, Almasi was, of course, a wanderer um, who, after five years in jail, uh, the man is bereft and um, brimming with grief and um, thwarted love. Uh, he's been in jail, he's lost He's lost everything. And so five years in jail and now he's living, as the, as the novel begins, Almasi is leaving jail and he's going back home to, of course, you guessed it, Cherangani. Um, uh, of course, where 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 Ken um, came from, he used he used those uh, those 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 places that were in his uh, in his fiction, and uh, he describes the man after he comes out of jail. Bada ya kupiga mikupo, miwili mitatu, akumbuka alikuwa mejiambia havuti sigara tena, alizima sigara na kurejesha kurejesha mfukoni. Now this is a man who is struggling with uh, stopping. You know, uh, cigarette smoking. He wanted to stop. He had the urge of of of, of smoking, uh, but so we are thrown into the into the struggle of of a man struggling to stop something he wants to to stop, which really is um, brings us to our own lives. Um, of course, all of us are struggling with things we want to stop. Um, we're struggling with very many, uh, many, many, many issues that we want to to stop. Uh, we're struggling with the with with the, with the habits. Uh, so this man was a man that was struggling uh, and wanted to stop uh, something. Um, and uh, then something else about Notre Almasi is that in the introduction, uh, he says. Uh, kutabaruku kwa kitabu hiki na tabaruku na binti yangu katila samba karibu katika dunia hii yenye asali na shubiri uh, of course people who know Kiswahili know asali is honey and shubiri is aloe vera so he was saying that life um, is full of both uh, the sweet and the and the bitter, uh, which really, it's it's a great person who deals with the ironies of life, because the simple minds will think, um, or rather the idealists will think that uh, life is just uh, the sweet things, but it's actually both asali na shubiri. So one of the things I liked about Ken was that uh, he dealt with the ironies of life. Uh, let me read another 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 one from uh, from his book. Uh, Dr. Almasi says, Alikumbuka marehemu nyanjale 
aliyecheza naye mpira. Njalale alikuwa mbumbumbu masomoni lakini mpirani alikuwa nguzo shadidi katika ngome ya timu ya shule yao. Uh, so from that we can see that uh, he was saying that this man called uh, Njalale he was not good in um, in class alikuwa mbumbumbu that means he really could not understand anything in the class but the man was good in football in football which really is life uh, so that ability of uh, being able to deal with the ambivalence of life to deal with the, the ironies of life to deal with the metaphors uh, difficult metaphors in life that was quite um, something that uh, i really liked about him and uh, that came out in his uh, in his work something else of course um, all great writers um, when it comes to his style now he was he was an intense man and uh, he could draw pictures uh, angeweza kuchora kwa maneno as we say he could draw pictures um, with his his words and uh, and his pen and uh, let me read another um, part of his book Dr. Almasi when the man is describing uh, Vilima Becherangani and now this is Almasi of course leaving a prison and looking at those mountains again na nasema Vilima vilikuwa vimetanda mawingu meusi mawingu yaliyofanyiza maumbo ya kila aina mara aliona umbo la malaika mwenye mabawa meupe na kuvaa tabasa musoni mara aliona umbo la ibilisi mweusi amekenua meno kwa maya na haya mara aliona umbo la kimanzi mzuri aliye nyosha mikono kana kwamba anamlaki mara aliona umbo la, la lango la jela au askari jela amesimama na korofindo mara aliona umbo la kasri yenye fahari so he would really employ uh, the contrast and and conflict because uh, just like great, great uh, works of art great movies there has to be conflict you must have um, the villain there you must have the good person you must have contract contrast and conflict and he was really good at that in all uh, on, in all um, his books and of course he was a master of the of the kiswahili language i think that's something that um, we really can't take away from him the man was a master in the kiswahili language he would write and um, you'll get the picture of what um, of what really uh, he's talking about so um let me just see um some of the things some of the comments i've seen i'm seeing here uh otoa sifuna anasema uh makiwa will tune in uh naona tena hapa uh jacqueline mshingo anasema burihani swahiba uh, naona hapa vidija dalizu mwalimu anasema lala pema ken um, so